Hi, I'm Ted Berg for For the Win on Facebook Live. Joined today by my colleague Nate Sweat and by a not, an in, not insignificant amount of sweatiness, yeah. as it turns out. It is, let's be fair, extremely hot in New York City. And we had to run like across the street to get here so we weren't late. So, uh, yeah, as, as it turns out, that, means, that just means I'm going to sweat throughout this. So, Good. Excuse Good. me. Excuse I'm, me. I'm perfect. I feel very comfortable. Uh, you're, you're starting to glisten a little <laughs> bit up there. Right, okay. I mean, there's lights on. There's, we're we're going to talk sports because that's what we do. We talk, we write about sports. And a big topic today in sports of the last couple of days, Tim Tebow, former NFL quarterback. He was a quarterback. Thing. You know, a quarterback-like product. Yes. Um, and Heisman Trophy winner, great college quarterback, great yep. athlete. Tried out for... Uh, some 28 baseball teams, there were a couple that didn't make it, but nearly every baseball team sent some scouts to see Tim Tebow play baseball yesterday, and they saw him play some baseball. Yes. What do you want to talk about with this? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Um, so, 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 um, I have some ideas. Go on. Um, you're a baseball guy. I am a baseball guy. A 29-year-old former professional football player who... Has not played baseball since he was, I don't know, 16 or 17 years old, junior junior in high school. Shows up and demands, not demands, but offers up an open tryout that he will televise. Are you, as a baseball fan and lover of the game, are you insulted? Um, I can understand why a minor league player, a, a bunch of people, might be insulted. Uh, by the very, not not by Tebow himself, right? I don't think you can blame, and I feel like that's always kind of the case with Tebow, is it seems like... He is, you know, maybe he plays into it a little bit. Maybe he helps pump himself up a little bit. But it always feels like the hype around Tebow, Tebow isn't entirely Tebow's fault. You know, like it, yeah. it's like that he is, you know, and, and again, like I, I'm going to disagree with him on numerous philosophical issues. Right. But at his core, he seems like a very well-intentioned guy. And yes. like in this case, a guy who wants to play baseball, who has due to his celebrity, the wherewithal to, you know, hire uh, former baseball players to train him, to work out at a top facility in Arizona. And to get himself this, you know, scouting showcase for for major league scouts. If I'm a 22 year old guy who's just spent four years in rookie ball and you know working my butt off to, to just to try to make it to that next level, am I resentful? Absolutely, yeah. right? Because I think it undercuts just how extremely talented you have to be at baseball to play, even in the low minors. You yeah. know, and the idea that Tim Tebow. 12 years after having his last baseball game he's going to just you know walk right into this and be a major league player i mean it's it's not going to happen for yeah. first and first things first and i think that probably again if you're a minor leaguer if you're a baseball fan even that's sort of the what you hang your hat on here is that he's not he's not going to make it i mean yeah. there's there's the, that tiny little inkling of a chance and i think it would be super fun if he did but the odds are so incredibly yeah. long you and, know and I actually, you know, basically what his argument for doing this, because I, I was sort of curious. It's like, what are, you, what are you doing here? Like, what is the point here? And I guess Why his not just play football? Yeah. You know, like, just switch positions. I think his argument is, uh, you know, I'm trying to show people that if you, if you have a dream to do something, and clearly this guy misses being a competitor and so, for some whatever yeah. reason. He misses a team, you, you know, environment, and so he decides, you know what, I'm going to show people that, What's the worst that can happen? You try something, and I have a unique opportunity to do so. That being said, you know, he gave this interview to Scott Van Pelt where he was saying, you know, I'm here to put the work in. It's like, dude, you've been, you decided this three months ago. Right. Like, these guys, this is their life. They get on yeah. terrible buses and they have I mean, horrible. It is a rough. Yeah. It is a rough. They get paid like, less than minimum wage. You know, yeah. Yeah. To, it, to do this, and they're putting in the work. You're not putting, you know, you worked out. You're, you're a very fit man. I'm proud of, you know, good for, not you. You're, you're yeah, decent. Yeah. I'm, I would, if I were more fit, I probably wouldn't be sweating so much right now. But you know, um, but yeah, I, I, that was it for me. That the, oh, I'm here to put in the work. It's like I, I don't doubt that you'll you'll do the work, but like you haven't. You really haven't done he, the work that these guys have. He hasn't. And, you know, and baseball is a sport where paying your dues and the thing, unwritten yeah. rules and all that stuff is are big things. And and that's always going to be part of it for him. And and you know what? Like I, I happen to think that a lot of that is nonsense. And if the guy can play, the guy can play. Let him play, right? But mm -hmm. I think that what you're going to see, and I think someone's going to sign Tim Tebow because, uh, and, and I think, you know, what a lot of people don't get is that 
Just that a team signs him won't mean he's a real major league prospect or anything close. What it means is that uh, most major league teams don't own their minor league teams, right? So it's a, a weird uh, political relationship there where you are, as the major league team, you're sending a, a minor league team, a bunch of guys, and in many cases, you're sending them a bunch of guys who at best are going to become you know, 25th men, 5th outfielders, long relievers. There's not a lot of marquee prospects coming through any minor league town in any given year. Maybe yeah. you're, you're a Cubs team and you have seven of them, or maybe you're an Angels team and you get none. Right. Yeah. So, so there are everywhere in the sport, there are affiliates who are getting a little bit antsy about gate and yep. about the players they've had and about keeping their fans happy because it's some individual owner who owns this minor league team who wants something from the major league team. So I think that Tebow represents this huge uh, negotiating chit for a major league team. Like, okay, well, you know, we're going to ask you to provide our minor leaguers with better housing and healthy meals, but we're going to give you Tim Tebow and you're going to see a summer full of sellouts. Yeah. You know, and, and so I think he will get signed. And baseball is... To some extent, uh, a meritocracy, right? Because yeah. you're going to see it. In no other sport is everything as thoroughly measured, right? And and so if he hits 320 and shows power and plays good outfield, sure, then you know he'll move up. But I think more likely you're going to see something. Uh, I don't even know if he'll be as good as Michael Jordan was. I think yeah. that uh, people talk about Jordan a lot, and it's it's always about his failure as a baseball player. Hitting 202 in double A is impossible. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's impossible. Yeah. It's, it's so just obscenely crazy to me that Michael Jordan, after that long, uh, after yeah. after playing baseball, could could show up and perform okay. You know, not completely embarrass himself in double A. But he's the best athlete we've ever seen. And that's right? the thing. You know, Tebow's an incredible athlete. I think he showed, you know, in his tryout, he can hit for power if he needs. Uh, you know, the, they got him some live arms in there, and all of a sudden, any curveball, it was over. He couldn't, he couldn't hit any sort of mm -hmm. breaking ball. And so that is something I think, you know, when you're that strong and you have that great hand-eye coordination, as I'm sure he does, he's an unbelievable athlete. You know, he ran a 60-yard dash and some ungodly Well, that time. was actually kind of uh, an interesting thing, was that they said his 60-yard dash time was just, like, slightly above Major League average. Yeah, but which for a guy that enough. size. For a guy that size, is incredible. But in my head, and this is even as a baseball fan and someone who talks all the time about, you know, the athleticism of the modern baseball player, in my head, uh, an NFL guy, like a, a guy who's running the ball in the NFL, like Tebow, and I get it, he's a quarterback. It's not like he's, yeah. you know, we're putting Adrian Peterson out there, but... To me, I would have just expected him to be the fastest guy in the field, or one of the yeah. fastest guy in the field. I mean, he, he, I guess you'd say for his size, he's quick. Definitely. Um, and he has power if the ball is coming straight at him. Um, and I'm sure he'll be okay. And like, maybe a, a, a enough that like, you can justify I mean, having it depends. It depends on the level, right? Because like, you'll get, so like, I think typically you think like, A ball, you get guys who throw really hard and don't have breaking balls yet, or guys who have control but don't really throw that hard. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, maybe a ball he can feast on those guys who, you know, because yeah, I, I bet Tim Tebow has the hand eye and the certainly like the, the fast twitch muscle quickness to square up a 95 mile an hour fastball. And, yeah. and he will get a lot of those at a ball because it'll be situations where guys don't have any other real option, yeah. you know? And, and so if he can just even just lay off a breaking pitch. A little bit, he'll get some opportunities. You get up to Double A, that's when you get you know guys with with two viable major league pitches. And yep. Triple A, you get guys who can throw breaking balls for strikes. And so, I feel like that's that's the breaking point probably yep. for him. And, and again, and I, I'd love to see him succeed, but I just don't. It's just not going to happen. I I wanted to ask you about a tweet that you wrote about because it just cracked us up. Um, ESPN compared his, I believe it was ESPN, compared Tim Tebow's contact rate in this session with the contact rate of actual major leaguers this year to, as if to show, like, Tebow's right there with and Rajai it said, Davis. It said, like, yeah. uh, baseball major league players comparable to Tebow based on his workout se session. It's nuts. It's yeah. nuts. <laughs> it, it doesn't, it, first of all, 
contact rate is kind of like a, a fairly arbitrary stat to choose. Yeah. I get that you don't have a lot to work with because it's not a real game, right? But if you look, uh, there's not, it's not like contact rate is the number one thing that correlates to success as yeah. a big league hitter. It's one aspect of it. You, you don't want to just constantly be swinging and missing, but uh, I, I wrote about it today. The guy who has the highest contract, uh, contact rate in the league, uh, Martin Prado, who's a very good hitter, uh, has a lower OPS than John Carlos Stanton, who has one of the lowest contact, contact yeah. rates in the league, right? Like, a lot of it is the type of contact yeah, you're making. Exactly. And, and I think, you know, Tebow was, was sort of mixed in that department. Uh, and, and just the idea that it just seems, it seems so insulting to, uh, it was Hanley Ramirez, who's been a great player, like yeah. a great player across his career. Uh, as Rubio Cabrera, another guy who's been really good, and Rajai Davis, a, a, a valuable, you know, fourth outfielder yeah. type guy who's having a real nice season this year. And to say like, oh, well, Tim Tebow hit uh, 75% of the, of the 58 pitches he saw. So that means he's just like Rajai Davis. Like if I'm Rajai Davis, it's like, I'm never, I'm never granting ESPN an interview <laughs> yeah. again in my life. That's the most insulting thing. Like they're yeah. playing against you're seeing you're, you're you're on the Indians. You're seeing Justin Verlander, you know, twice a month, yep. right? Like it, it's just, it's nothing like Justin Verlander yeah. up 0-2 yeah, in a count. Yeah, it's you know? just nothing. Not, like, it's nothing like yeah. the same thing. It's so it seems feels ridiculous to even be discussing it, right? That like that I that I like I saw it. I you I tweeted it. I was on the elliptical machine at the gym. Probably part of why I'm sweating so much right now. <laughs> uh, but and and like had to like pull it out. Like oh my god, are you kidding me? Yeah. You know? Uh, we get we get questions right. from the Let's, from the people. Sure. Oh, by the way, if this is Nate Scott, I'm Ted Berg. Uh, we are taking some questions. We're talking Tim Tebow. We'll uh, talk some other things too. If you've got questions about them, uh, and we have uh, three pretty decent questions. Nice. Uh, first is from Adam, and I'll throw this your way because it feels like maybe an alley oop. Yeah. Uh, can Tim Tebow be another Bo Jackson? No. <laughs> No, he can't. Um, hey, because he wasn't even as good at football. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you know, Tebow, it was a, a fine NFL quarterback. You know, the most interesting thing to me is he probably wasn't playing his best position. And for whatever reason, he would rather go and try and play baseball than become a halfback in or a fullback in football, which teams seemed willing to be wanting yeah. to try with him. And he, and he, you know, in the interview he gave with Scott Van Pelt, he said, the two things I love are – Playing baseball and playing quarterback, not playing football. He he distinguished. Yeah, I, I it like was weird. It's weird because you brought up back. Yeah, and it's like, well, what? You you clearly miss being a competitor. You clearly miss being a team. The the underlying thing in all of this is, uh, Good Morning America is very happy to have Tim Tebow become a, t a TV guy for them. Same with SEC Network. Same with ESPN. These people want him on television. They are going to give him lots of money to be handsome and be nice on television because people really seem to like him. He's super and nice. He's, and he's, he's got very his eyes. Handsome, mesmerizing. Very, very yeah. charming. Um, very charming guy. You know, he, he, he can do shows where he, like, renovate someone's house and they don't know about it and they come out and then he they all hug and, and it's Tim Tebow has Tim Tebow. renovated your house exactly. by hand. He's I mean, like, he could yeah. he would, could be the king of Florida if he wanted to, yeah. you know. I don't think they have one, but they might make oh, it for him. Yeah. Um, but he's just so hung up on A, being a quarterback. Anyway, to return to the Bo Jackson thing, no. Um, he couldn't, you know, Bo Jackson played through college and played, in an, played baseball through college and played at an extremely high level. Um, was an incredibly good hitter, was a much more natural fielder, um, could really do it all. And he never stopped playing baseball. And he right? never That's stopped playing is, baseball. Because there have been other guys, like, and, and there have been, I mean, Russell Wilson played minor league baseball. Uh, Ricky Williams played minor league baseball, right? There yeah. have been guys who've done it. No one did it as successfully as Bo Jackson. Yeah. Uh, Deion Sanders, maybe. You can make the case that Deion Sanders, just for longevity, uh, I think, you know, was sort of a, a comparable player to Bo Jackson just because he was such a good NFL player. Yeah. Um, but those guys are the freaks, right? And, yeah. and 12 years off of baseball, it's just, it's too hard. It's, it's way too, too hard. hard. It's, it's way too hard. So, no, Tim Tebow is not going to be the next uh, Bo Sorry. Jackson. How about this one? This is from Joe. Uh, and again, I'm Ted Berg. That's Nate Scott. We're from For the Win. We're talking Tim Tebow, uh, taking some sports questions. How athletic is Tim Tebow compared to other big leaguers? And I would say, uh, again, that I think that the athleticism of major leaguers does get undercut yeah. to some extent. But I would say he's very athletic. Yes. For, oh you know, no, he's he's right I there. I mean, he's athletic for an NFL player. Exactly. I mean, Tebow's. I mean, he's a he's a big big guy who can move. And if you're a big big guy who can move, you know, and 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 have power and, and hit you know and, and run for speed like that's 
that's a good thing. He's and, that, and that's part of why some team will take a chance on him. Of course, like, well, of course. You know, guy. maybe you know, maybe he'll at age twenty nine. It's just at age twenty nine, you're not going to learn how to hit a curveball. It's I just, mean, I got to feel like that's why he's wearing. I mean, his uniform was impossibly tight. Very tight. Right? Like, it, I got to feel like he was just like, you know, what I got to showcase here is how much of a stud I am. Like, yeah. let me just put on the tightest uniform possible, see if I can yeah. get some scouts to be like, whoa. And it, and it sort of, you know, and if you see that and you see him, the, the pop of the bat, the ball coming off the bat, you saw, you know, he took some way out of the park. Um, it's just, that's, baseball is mental and there's a lot going on and there are situations and it's difficult and, you know, just being able, there are dudes at our gym who can probably lift as much as Tim Tebow and they're not professional right. athletes, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, baseball's a, it's a different sort of athleticism too, you know, they're, they're just, it's a. I think there are a lot of things that that do correlate, and there are guys, uh, your Mike Trout's of the world, your yes. you know Puig, people like that who just are you know freakish athletes who would probably be good at, at any sport they played, yeah. right? Um, Gene Carlo Stanton is first team. Oh my God. Yeah. If you ever see him in person, I, I I recommend going to see when he's back on the field. See Giancarlo stand in person he's because a, yeah. that's the first person I've ever seen in real life walk by me when I was at a baseball game, and I just said, "Oh my god!" Like it, like I, I couldn't believe that he's insane. real. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. You know, he he is every bit the size and speed and and strength of uh, an NFL tight end or an NFL yep. wideout. You know, something like that. Uh, outside linebacker, if he puts on twenty pounds. You know, yep. uh, it's it's there are those guys in, in the majors, but I think it's a. Uh, it's because it's a more like fine-tuned mm-hmm. sport. Uh, it's it's not it's not the same. There's it's not like I feel like every guy in the NFL, outside of maybe like the punters, yeah. are physical freaks, and probably even punters yep. are physical freaks too. I mean, we've seen Steve yep. Weatherford. He he is he's a physical yeah. freak. Yeah. Um, so and then you look different. at baseball. I mean, Ozzy Guillen and Pedro Martinez each weighed 130 right. pounds, and they're two of the best players. Right, and that's <laughs> a, and that's a, well, one of the things that always gets me with baseball, and 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 you could see it with Tim T- Tim Tebow, right? Like. You see him throw, he doesn't have the best arm. And, yeah. and you look at him and you say, why doesn't this guy throw harder than uh, the example that always jumps Ichiro. to my mind is uh, Ichiro, right? That's a great one. Yep. Um, or like Billy Wagner. I don't know yep. if you remember him, but mm-hmm. he was just like a short little stout dude who threw 100 miles an hour. Yeah. And some people, it's just a muscles that you have or you don't yep. have and timing that you have or you don't have, you know? And, and I think that uh, that's a big part of it in baseball. And there are these guys who aren't, your Bartolo Colon, right? Who yep. does not look like the part of an athlete and is just incredible at doing this one thing, this precision yep. and, and strength that it takes. Uh, we got more questions. This is from Robert. Is this just a big publicity stunt? He says it's not. I am done trying to figure out Tim Tebow's motivations. You know, I, I don't know if he, he's such, you know, from, from what I've seen in interviews, I've met him once at an airport. Um, it seems to be sincere. It seems to come from a real place. I, I really do think when he says, you know, I love baseball, I want to try and do this, I have a unique opportunity, and I want to show people that I am chasing my dreams, I think he really believes that. My second dream. My second dream. My second dream. I, I, that's what I wanted to bring that up a before. It's like I, I think it's really important that everyone chase your dream. And then if you fail at that, that dream, find a second dream and, and, face, and, and, and chase so, that one. And, and you never stop chasing your dreams, I guess, would be the, the lesson right. this time. Chase all but your dreams. The thing that makes me think this isn't a publicity stunt is Tim Tebow doesn't need a publicity stunt. Good Morning America it just wants him to be on TV every yeah, single day. If he goes and plays in the minor leagues, he's going to get significantly less publicity than yes. he would. Just going around being Tim Tebow. SEC Network wants right. him every Saturday to be their guy, and, right? And that, that's a job. Um, he can yeah, have. I, I think he's earnest. I think he wants to play baseball. I, you know, and, and again, I don't know the guy personally, right? But yeah. everything we know about him suggests he is a legitimately earnest dude who, yeah. who is doing this, you know, the way he wants to do this. And mm-hmm. and and so for that, I can't blame him. I would love to play baseball in the majors too. Yeah. I know I couldn't, right? Yeah. He apparently hasn't come to that realization yet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, I don't think it's. I don't think for publicity because I think if he wanted publicity he could start a mega church right like yep. there are so many on, different ways Tim Tebow dancing with the stars right they would love it he could be the bachelor there are so, there are so many ways Tim Tebow Tim should Tebow be could, the bachelor by the way great bachelor I don't know I don't know if it's the right fit I don't know if it's the right fit it won't be it, as edgy as it usually is it would be a strange is. turn it would be a strange turn for that show <laughs> but point is if Tim Tebow wanted publicity he could get it in far easier ways than riding the bus through yeah. Alabama to be 100%. a double A baseball player uh, other this is from Marissa and this is a good question Question regarding something you said before, uh, and you know we got a few minutes left before we wrap up. But uh, if not Tim Tebow, 
who are some other nominees for King of Florida? Ooh. Um, that's a really like really my first. The first thing that jumps to my mind is Florida man. Florida, but man. that's not a real guy. That's not a real guy. Um, Someone named Vladimir Putin was elected, yeah. uh, arrested at Publix the other yeah. day. Yeah, Vladimir Putin. Uh, you know, Dwayne Wade was the obvious choice. Mm -hmm. He left. No, uh, no, no. So yeah. now he is, he's out of the running for the king of Florida. I mean, John uh, Carl, I would vote for John Carl Stanton for king of Florida. That would be cool. I would be cool with that. Is he popular enough there? I don't know. But he could be. I mean, that's a regal-looking dude. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that, I, th I feel like he could take, they might have to split it, and Giancarlo Stanton would take the South, yeah, and then Tebow would that, take the North. I don't think, I don't think he, he would even carry Miami in a vote. I think it would be like Pitbull, right? <laughs> like, Ooh, you know, Pitbull! Like, Pitbull could be the king of Florida. That's if, just, if, if the what United about Florida? States, what about yeah, Florida? Yeah, no, <laughs> I honestly think if, if, if Florida seceded, which I'm not ruling it is out. Is Pitbull even fl from Florida? I mean, in, in his heart he is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't actually know where he's from. I don't know his real name either. Yeah, it's Pitbull. I, I feel like Pitbull yeah. could get himself elected king of Florida. And that's the thing is, I think if they seceded and they were like, all right, we're going to elect a, or we're going to name a king, I think Tebow and Pitbull are the, would maybe, maybe like, the, like, a, like, like, like King Tebow and Prince yeah, Pitbull. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like those, those two. Are, they do represent sort of like the two elements of Florida, Florida you've got yeah. going on. Yeah, all right, I buy that. Okay. Um, so it's Pitbull. It's Pitbull. Pitbull's the answer. Uh, the rock king of Florida. That's obviously Scott Stapp from Creed. Oh, big yeah. Florida, big Marlins fan. Yeah, big Marlins fan. Um, <laughs> What's this song? Oh God, uh, it's called Marlins Will Soar. Marlins and it Will is Soar. One of <laughs> the worst pieces of music ever recorded. Ted and makes me listen features, to it about once a year. He's like, and it, he still does the Creed yeah, yeah. thing. So he's like, Strike House bass hits double play. <laughs> It's amazing. And everybody, if you're not, you stop watching us yeah, right now we're and done. click over to Scott Stapp's Marlins Will Soar. <laughs> Worst song you will ever hear. No offense, Scott Stapp. Uh, yeah, actually, take, offense, take offense to you, <laughs> Scott Stapp. You have like harmed music with Marlins Will Soar. Uh, if Tim Tebow, this is from Foss, who we know. Um, hey, Foss. Former colleague. Uh, sort of a, remains a thorn in our sides here. Because <laughs> uh, this, 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 this one's for you. I think he means this question for you. If Tim Tebow was a Taco Bell item, which food would he be? Uh, he would be a grilled stuffed burrito. Is that a, is that a Taco Bell he, item? I mean, he is, he is bulky. He is, is that a Taco Bell that item? Is a, that is a Taco Bell item. All right, grilled stuffed burrito, that's my um, answer. Yeah, I don't know. He feels healthier than any Taco Bell item, right? Like, he would have more pure. pure. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I don't, think, I don't think there's a lot of Tim Tebow Taco Bell overlap. Like, I don't see the... Aesthetically, I don't see what Foss is getting at here. I think he's just... Trying to see what he can he get into like the show. The largest apple pie. Um, but that's not healthy. I feel like it would just be an apple, right? Like just like an apple would be like Tim Tebow. Mike Trout's an apple. Mike Trout could be an apple. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a this has taken a strange and abstract turn, and I feel like that is probably good. as good a place as any to wrap it up. What? Also, if you think Mike Trout is a trout, that's a stupid opinion. Sorry. That is, I mean, that is the type of thing you come up with if you completely lack creativity, right? Like if if you've got other athletes you think are foods, we are all ears. You can comment on yep. this video. Uh, we can maybe even discuss it for a forthcoming segment here. But uh, for right now, we'll just assume that Mike Trout is an apple, that Tim Tebow is a grilled stuffed burrito, uh, that Nate Scott is here, that I'm Ted Berg, and that we are going to uh, hopefully get into some air conditioning soon because it is getting a little bit raw in here uh, um, so thanks for joining me today Nate uh, it's always been good yeah I, I wasn't going for a handshake but I'll well, take I it. went for it uh, and everyone on the internet you know peace out and have yourself a, a lovely day <laughs>